Well hello there, welcome back to the channel, hope you're safe and well. In this video I'll be visiting a local air gun range and uh, doing some pellet testing with my BRK Ghost. So let's roll those titles. Now you might be lucky and uh, live in an area where you've got a lot of air gun shooting facilities or at least a few on your doorstep. If you live where I do then you're looking at probably travelling an hour or more to, uh, to get somewhere where you can shoot undercover or shoot indoors with your air rifle. Or at least that's what I thought. So. Um, Imagine my surprise when I discovered that uh, there was actually an air gun range almost on my doorstep, almost uh, only about 10 miles away. So anyway, when I discovered uh, this range run by Impact Air Guns, uh, I got in touch with a guy who runs the uh, range on a daily basis, Jim, and, uh, and asked if I could uh, pop down and have a look around. Um, and he invited me down to show me the facilities and uh, and to do a bit of shooting. So um, that's what we're going to do in this video. Going to uh, show you some of the video that I took of the facilities at uh, Impact Air Guns Range. And um, while I was there, I took the BRK Ghost with the intention of uh, doing some pellet testing. Um, we did get the pellet testing done. Well, I did get the pellet testing done eventually, but uh, had a few issues which. Um, I'll discuss and uh, and uh, show you uh, the outcomes. So um, off we go. Let's go to uh, Impact, Impact Air Guns Range in Swavesea. Just wanted to quickly show you whereabouts uh, Impact Air Guns is uh, located. So um, I've opened up Google Maps in a browser window. As you can see, if you type in Impact Air Guns in the search in the search bar, it will find the location and show you up on the map. As you can see here, we've got Cambridge down to the southeast with the top of the M11. So uh, basically, you know, if you're coming up from the south or from Cambridge, uh, come on to the A14 at the end of the 11. This is the new part of the A14. And uh, you can turn off uh, to uh, Swavesea by uh, Cambridge Services. If you're coming from the north, you come down the A1 onto the A14. Similarly, uh, A14 from the west. So uh, you can see it's pretty good uh, access routes from uh, all directions. Uh, we've got Huntington over here and St Ives. Um, so it's easy to find and it's easy to get to. OK, we're here at uh, Impact Air Guns Indoor Range with Jim then. Who, if you'd like to just introduce yourself, Jim, and tell us what you do here. Hi, my name's Jim. I'm the BASC Qualified Instructor here at Impact. And also the range officer. Um, you don't need to book a bespoke uh, instructor's lesson to actually have some tuition here. So if you were to come, you need some help, guidance, tuition, then that's part of what we offer as well. We don't just leave you to your own devices or we'll give you the time that you need uh, to make the most of your time here. So give us a little bit of a background to this, uh, to the company and setting up the range here. Okay, so Impact Air Guns really was born from uh, the ashes of Theoban, if you like. Uh, Theoban uh, went to liquidators back in the early 2000s, and Impact Air Guns picked up from where Theoban left off, operated out of the factory in Sutton, um, got to a point where it wasn't really viable to carry on making rifles anymore, uh, so downsized and just concentrated on servicing and the parts inventory from Theoban. Um, time passed and then last August we had the opportunity to create the indoor and the outdoor range here. Uh, so we've started building up a customer base now and we're nearly into a year now. And how's it going? We've got 170 people signed up now. So well, that's starting good. from scratch, uh, I was customer number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we're up to about 170 now on the books, um, so we're seeing a steady flow of regular 
Ira's on Monday evenings, Wednesday evenings, Fridays in the daytime, early afternoon into the afternoon, and Saturdays morning into the afternoon. Let's give you a 360 of the range then. There's all the shooting lanes. And spin around and see where the targets are. So the lighting's very good. Now, the way it works here is um, during your session, you've got your targets out. Um, if you've uh, used up all your targets while the session's still going on, then you've got a selection of other targets and spinners just to keep you occupied um, until the end of your shooting session. And uh, what sort of rifles do you have available for hire? So currently we've got a small selection. We've got a Bioarch HW30s in 177 which yeah. are excellent junior guns but yeah. at the same time when i got them i couldn't stop shooting it when i got it the accuracy yeah. was absolutely amazing nice guns. Yeah. really cool uh then we've got in 2.2 two, we've got fx uh, t12s in 2.2 two, two, um, which seemed to cheat the wind quite nicely outside and they were brand new similarly so are our virocs and then our main go-to uh, club gun would be the ATA Airborne, which was a bit of a bit of a revelation, to be honest, for the mm -hmm. price point. Yep. Who'd have thought? But um, the accuracy is staggering, and the shot count means we don't have to keep charging in between yep. sessions yep. as well. So that makes sense. Yeah, we've got enough rifles to cater yep. to whatever you might want to try. Break barrels for the first time, or maybe you haven't shot air rifles since the nineteen eighties or something, and that was what you shot. Yeah. But otherwise, then, yeah, we've got PCPs for a sort of easier transition into the sport. So, so if somebody wants to come down here and shoot, what do they need to do? Uh, you need to go onto our website, uh, www.impactairguns.co.uk. Um, there's a lot of information on there, but crucially, our calendar's on there as well. Uh, so you need to just sign up as a customer, as a member. It doesn't mean that you're committed to a membership fee. It just means that we've got you on our database. Yeah. Once you've done that, uh, you then need to choose what level of payment you want to do. So in terms of just want a lane, a lane higher with your own rifle, um, or you want to hire one of our rifles, um, there are different options, but crucially you need to make your payment first and then go back to the calendar and then choose your date and time. And then you book your time indoor or outdoor just a couple of things to add that uh, jim mentioned to me before i left uh, the range also offers um, uh, cylinder refills at five pound a refill uh, if you're shooting your pcp at the range you get re free refills while you're there uh, free targets and um, if you're renting a range gun you get free pellets so not bad so while we're here going to take the opportunity to uh break out the RK Ghost and uh, do a bit of pellet testing. I haven't really put a mixture of pellets through this barrel yet to uh, see what it likes, so hopefully we'll find out during this session. So uh, let's have a look at what pellets we're going to be using then. So we've got uh, five different types of pellets. Uh, the top row are all uh, from the same factory, JSB, and the bottom two are from the same factory, H&M. Now I have been using the Diablo Fields through this uh, rifle, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how the rest compare. So let's get started. Rifle's currently zeroed in at 37 yards, which is me uh, point blank range for a 20 millimeter uh, kill zone. So um, I'm shooting at 25 yards, so I'm trying to work out the best aim point to use. I'm going to have to use a little bit of hold under. And um, so the groups are going to be below the uh, aim point, which is not a bad thing because it means that uh, my aim point's going to stay intact throughout the uh, groupings. So I'm going to do two uh, five shot groups um, from each tin initially and uh, see where we go. So we're going to start with the top row on the left hand side with the AA fields. And it was at this point that things started to go a bit um, wrong. Uh, I'd already uh, shot a few sighting shots and the gun had worked perfectly but as soon as I started to uh, try and shoot the first 
five shot group, I couldn't get the gun to cock. And uh, it was sounding like uh, the sears just weren't latching. Now, there is a known issue uh, with these rifles that at times uh, a pellet or a bit of a pellet can uh, fall back into the, uh, into the action and stop it from working. So um, I did get my Allen keys out and uh, dropped the sear block at the bottom of the, uh, of the rifle. Uh, just requires uh, unscrewing two screws, but there was there was no sign of any pellet lodging in there uh, And it was while I was fiddling around with the rifle that um, I realized that if it was tilted over to the side It would cock perfectly, but not when it was upright So I was able to carry on with the pellet test just by uh, tilting the rifle over to the left every time I wanted to cock it Well, that's the first one, pretty good group. Right, that's the AA fields then, made a pretty good account of themselves. Next row down then, JSB exacts, let's see what these can do. Oh, you won't count that one. <laughs> Right, that's JSP exacts done. So now we're on to FT exacts. Same procedure, two five shot groups. Ooh. Last one was mm -hmm.
Right, that's all the JSB stable pellets out of the way. We're going to move on to the H and M's now. And uh, what we're doing first, we're doing the Barracuda eights. So that's the first five done then, and I must say, these are looking pretty good. Is that through the same hole? So that's one flyer there. Right, that's the end of the um, Barracuda 8s. I didn't mean, meant to, mean to bring some Barracuda FTs, but I forgot to put them in the bag, so I'll have to do them another time. But um, let's move on. Final pellet in our test then, these are the Weirark F&T Specials. So, uh, look at these. These are slightly heavier at 8.64. I guess we'd expect, expect a bit more of a drop. So first group is looking good, Let's see how we do in the last five. Well, let's go down and have a look at the target, shall we? Well, it's a close run thing. I think what this uh, test does show is that the barrel is not particularly pellet fussy. But I think that it is between the, uh, the AA fields, which we shot first, and possibly the Barracuda 8s. But it just seems to me that uh, the AA fields might have a slight edge here i don't know what do you think answers in the comments with all the time that i spent uh, trying to sort out the cocking issue with the rifle i didn't have time to do the uh, the follow-up test uh, where i was going to check the different power settings on the power wheel so uh, that left to wait for another time when i got home i did check the tugasir cassette here you can see by removing the two screws to check for uh, pellet debris there was none still so just to be sure i decided to move the uh, rear block which is achieved by loosening this grub screw and uh, taking out these four screws uh, from the top rail and it just slides out from the back as expected i didn't find any pellet debris but what i did find is that uh, the grub screw 
and all four of those screws were, were so easy to undo, they were almost loose. Uh, so I suspect that the problem was uh, that the block just wasn't lined up perfectly because of the loose screws. And uh, after tightening them up and checking, the gun then, uh, then cocked and worked perfectly and has since. Well, as you can probably imagine, I was uh, pretty pleased to get that uh, issue with the ghost sorted out. And uh, fortunately, it was uh, a simple fix. And uh, I've shot the rifle since on the garden range and it's been fine. So um, if I, I get a recurrence of that, then I'll know exactly what it is. But certainly I'll be keeping an eye on, the, on those uh, little bolts just to make sure that they don't work themselves loose again. So that's all I have for this video then. Uh, just want to say, uh, hope you found it interesting. Something a little bit different from what I've done uh, before. And um, hopefully I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.